my precious people. Welcome to another refreshing cup of water. Click. I told y'all from the beginning of this particular series, the question of why does God let bad things happen to people? I told you we we're gonna have to dissect many, many layers. In order to do that, we're gonna start at Genesis and go through the end of Revelations to put these answers together. Each scripture builds upon one another. I will only cover a few questions today. I will be using a lot of scripture. It's not an exhaustive list of scriptures for each comment uh, because of the time. But if you are ready to dig down deep into God's word with me, let's begin. Group questions number one. Where did Satan come from? How and why was he thrown out of heaven onto the earth? And was he thrown out alone? Ezekiel 28, 13 through 17 is one of the scriptures, group of scriptures that talks about Satan's beginning or mm, just whenever he first is brought up. But you have to understand, first of all, when studying prophecy, particularly in the Old Testament, sometimes it's called a double prophecy, meaning somebody, one of the prophets is talking about a king in the future or a country in the future, uh, maybe even Jesus. In this particular case, this scripture is talking about a king of Tyre, which was the enemy, one of the enemies of Israel but it's also talking about Satan. And those are the scriptures that I'm going to center on right now. Starting with 12b, verse 12. If I say b, then you know it's towards the end of the verse. You were the model of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you I didn't give the list of those stones. Your settings and mountings were made of gold on the day you were created. There's an answer. They were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I adorn, ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God, which is another word for heaven. A lot of times in the Bible, God talks about his presence being on a mountain. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Verse 16b, so I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God and I expelled you, O guardian cherub. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to earth. Luke 10, 18, he, being Jesus, replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Isaiah 14, 13, 14, you, Satan, said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will make myself like the Most High. Jude 1, 6, Here's another answer to one of our questions. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their home, these he, being God, has kept them in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. The great day is talking about after the tribulation, seven years of tribulation, after the thousand years of the millennium, all of the dead wicked are going to be brought up and they're going to be judged be before God. It's called the great white throne judgment. That's what that great day is talking about. You and I as Christians, we have a judgment, but it's not this. This is only for the wicked. Evidently, some of the angels with Satan were bound and put in this dark dungeon waiting for judgment. And that can be found in Revelations 9, 11, 
14. And some became Satan's workers, what we call demons, on the earth. The Word calls them demons too. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17 is where you can find out information on demons. Finally, 2 Peter 2, 4. God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment. Okay, those, those answered our questions, but now we have more questions. What are God's purposes for allowing Satan to be put on earth and to fight with Christians for a time? I'm going to add for a time and I'll tell about that later. What's God's purpose? Or as teenagers have always said to me, how come God would let him do that? Here's your answers. Some of them. One, God uses Satan's work of trouble to develop our godly character and our faith in him. 1 Peter 1 and 7, it speaks about being refined by fire. I'll explain it better for you. Whenever they put gold in a crucible and heat it up, all of the impurities that are in the gold float to the top and then a ladle is used to pull out those impurities and those impurities are thrown away. And that's how it is for us. Trouble makes us hot in the fire and our impurities, our ugly attitudes and sins and self comes up to the top and God is helping us to get these ladle out our sins and our ugly attitudes if we let him, if we cooperate with him. I'll tell you the long time ago, the first refining fire that happened to me, I was absolutely shocked at how much ugly sin and attitudes came up out of me. I was disgusted with myself. I was embarrassed before God. God knows us really well and he is helping us. Two, God uses Satan fighting against us to help keep us humble, breaking our pride. For pride, it does hinder our walk with God and it causes bad trouble with people. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 says, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three, God uses Satan's tricks to demonstrate his power so we'll understand who God is and we can worship him how he is due. Jeremiah 10 and 12 says, but God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Hebrews 1 and 3, the sun being Jesus is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by the power of his word, no, by his powerful word. So do you wanna know more about who God is? You can read about Jesus in the New Testament, particularly Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when you see Jesus feeling a certain way, saying things, then you can know loving people, then you can know that that's how God the Father is also. Four, okay, God records how we act, speak, and treat others. And especially, well, I don't know about specially, but in Him, how we are with Him. Evidently, all of that is recorded. And it says in many places, in the New Testament that God gives rewards for us while we're here on earth, particularly in the Old Testament, it says when we obey. And then the New Testament is talking about walking in righteousness with Jesus. And so he gives many rewards. I could have gone on for hours about the rewards, but I'm gonna give you several here. Uh, let's see. Where am I? Here we are. Revelations 2, 7. To those who overcome, overcome Satan, 
I will give the right to eat of the tree of life in the paradise of God. Revelations 2.11 For those who overcome, they will not be hurt by the second death. That's another way of saying hell. They won't go to hell. Revelations 2.17 To him who overcomes will be given hidden manna and given a white stone with a new name on it. This particular one is very special to me. For me, it says that God is going to choose a name about he and I, what he thinks about me, what our relationship is. He's going to come up with, an, he has a name for me other than Pam, and he's going to write that on the white stone and hand it to me. The white stone means several other things, but this is what means the most to me. When I see what name he gives me, what name he's going to give you, that makes me want to shout. <laughs> Revelations 3.26 I will give authority over the nations. I will give you authority over the nations. We're going to rule and reign with Christ during the millennium. And then there are rewards that we get now for walking close with God. And I'm just going to read one from Galatians 5.22-23. But these are all things that every human being deeply desires. Love. They, we want to be loved and we want to love others. And God gives us that ability and he loves us. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Look at those. Those are just some inner gifts, inner rewards, inner things he does in us. Number five. If a person is extremely stubborn and rebellious, God uses Satan to afflict people who refuse to repent and accept Christ. People always say, why? That doesn't sound right to me, but I want you to know it's because of his great, great, great love and mercy. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell forever. So he does things to get people's attention, but if they just keep refusing to open their heart to God, he, he's gonna help them out by allowing some affliction to come. He'll carry him through the affliction, help him, but he's trying to help him. Believe it or not, some people are still rebellious and stubborn and still won't receive him. But I want you to remember, this life is but a drop of water in an ocean compared to all of eternity. He is helping us get to eternity and heaven instead of hell. We're going to get to eternity one way or the other, but he's trying to help us get to heaven. 1 Corinthians 5.5 5, Hand this man over to Satan so that the sinful nature may be destroyed and his spirit saved on the day of the Lord. And finally 6. God uses Satan's traps that causes us pain to help us desire to stop sinning. We all want to sin, but the closer we get to God and the more things that we go through, the less and less that we sin, the more we become like Jesus. That pain causes us to grow in perseverance, and that's a big word that says it helps to make us determined to hang in there with God no matter what happens, no matter what comes our way. Psalms 119.11 says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Okay, I could go on for hours, but I'm going to stop here. And I want you to know next Monday at 11 o'clock, these are the, some of the questions I'm going to try to get through. What does it mean? No. 
Sorry. Does it mean that God does harmful, evil things on the earth? How does sin come into the world? What control does sin have on the world now? And when, when will he not have any control? These are some important questions that we're adding to our layers. And I will be talking to you next week. In the meantime, I am still praying for you. Whoever God is putting on this show and causing you to pull this up, I'm praying for you that God answers your questions and helps you with your confusion and whatever is going on in your heart. God is faithful. He's not going to let you down. I love you. In Jesus' name, I love you. Help these people, I pray. Bye.